Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Be Is For Build. I'm Chris, we're here working on the Lotus Evora. Um, today we were supposed to take a rival of a big flat of parts. It was all the parts that we need for this car. We got side panels and I can't remember what else, but mainly side panels. Oh, rear bumper, some other stuff. Anyways, uh, the, the shipment is lost. All is lost. So we're working on finding my palette of magical items to bolt my Lotus back together, actually to glue it back together. Uh, in case any of you guys didn't know, we do have all the parts ordered for this car to finish it. Except for the roof. I'm working on the roof. Don't worry about the roof. I'll figure out a roof. Uh, I still, I still, uh, I've got a guy I'm trying to get a, a hold of and I'm, I'm working on getting a roof, but you know what? You don't, you don't have to have a roof. And I bet you, I'm, I'm not really tall, but I bet I'm tall enough that if we didn't have a roof, it would be hilarious and I could probably like order a McDonald's through the roof. There you go. Fun fact. Anyways, uh, parts were supposed to be here today. Since they're not, what that should mean though is that they will be here really soon. So uh, it's time to get the side panel area ready to accept the new side panels. We gotta glue that sucker back together. So we gotta keep taking off the old side panels that are still on there and we gotta repair that bulkhead and that is what is in store this time around, this episode. Right? Right. Shout out to Audible. Audible is proudly sponsoring this episode. Thanks to Audible and I will talk about them later on in the episode. For now, stay tuned. All right, I'm feeling pretty amped, so I decided to go after the hard part first. I got a couple of my favorite cutting tools and a respirator. And all we're trying to do is take out all this fiberglass and all the plastic uh, rubber, uh, polyurethane, yep, uh, underneath it. So uh, when, we, uh, when we return to this area, we can put our new panel on. No time to waste, let's cue the music. progress shot just over two hours later I got all that fiberglass and all that rubber off of underneath there through there and around there and I left some of the bigger stuff that I can come back with a bigger tool so what happened was is right in there things got really tight and I had to get real technical because you can't get a lot of tools in there to cut things off so I got this tiny little blade on here and I actually went out and sharpened these two sides so it's like an even better cutter so it's got um, some serrated edges in the front here and then uh, blades on both sides and I can get in the real tight spaces with that. So uh, next part is a little tricky. So underneath here, you have this uh, piece of fiberglass and it's, that's like riveted into the car and glued. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna jump down there quite yet because I don't know what I'm doing down there. So I'm gonna move over to this part and just take some big chunks off of this everywhere I can. much more torn down than before. I'm getting pretty good at this stuff, guys. Seriously. Seriously, not seriously. I'm getting good. Uh, so here we are. We've got that whole side panel off. I thought that was gonna be a real trouble area. I thought there's gonna be like, there's a lot of mysterious kind of curves and corners and stuff in there. And I managed to turn it all into that. So um, we are really far with taking the side panel off. Basically we got up the, this is the um, windshield uh, support frame rail, windshield. I think they call it like a windshield frame rail. Anyways, and so this is like this massive piece of fiberglass here that goes all the way through the front of the car. It runs this small little thing that was covered all the way in uh, fiberglass by the side panel, which you can see a remnant of right here is the last little bit of it. So this is like, we cut it off here with the chop saw, or actually that was just broken off. And, and then it goes into, this is still windshield frame, so that's a keeper piece and this is a remove piece. So I'll have to tread real carefully when I get into this area. And that's the last little bit, which actually, well, and then we have the bottom, bottom piece of fiberglass. Once I get done with those two things, and that is the entire passenger side uh, removed, and then uh, remove all the rubber, and theoretically you could slap a new side on there. So it's actually, it's kind of really exciting, because once you glue the new side on there, it's just on there, and it's done. Um, I think, if I'm not forgetting anything. So, 
Um, this was very time consuming though. Uh, I think it's, it's almost midnight now, so I gotta call it a night for now. Tomorrow we'll come back, I'll finish off this side and probably do some more work on the other side. And then we will buy some stuff and uh, start playing with this rear bulkhead repair, some fiberglass and some other fun stuff. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, what's up guys? We're back for day two. Um, I don't really know where to start, so today the game plan is, not to say it won't change, Adrian's gonna come over later and help me out and I think we're gonna work on that rear bulkhead. I went out and bought all the supplies. I got lots of awesome fiberglass stuff and mat and sheet and resin and all sorts of great stuff. And uh, so I think we're gonna do that later though. So for now, I wanna try and finish up this part and then down here, which you guys can't see, I wanna finish removing that panel just so I can learn how it's done and get a grip on it for when I need to do it on the other side. So I'm gonna get a start up here. Well, I got all that off there. This looks like a total mess. I'll come back. I bought a little handheld small belt sander and I'll come back and clean all this stuff up uh, before we uh, prime it. So I believe that the primer that's on here is the same as what you put on a uh, windshield, the windshield type of primer that we used. And the glue uh, seems very, very similar, but I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to rely on that. I'm just going to order the glue that the factory recommends rather than using 3M uh, window glue because I'm not really sure if it is exactly the same. I want to use whatever factory said. So anyways, I got to come back with a sander and, and do this. So there's a lot of like small little gouges and stuff in here, but nothing that will uh, structurally affect um, this piece from functioning uh, properly. So that's all good news. So we actually, we removed it without, we removed that whole side panel without damaging our windshield frame, which was a big deal because that's a very, very hard part to replace and very expensive as well so that's done the next thing we got to do is clean up because we got a lot of debris here and I'm gonna need to get under the car and then I'm gonna take out that bottom piece of fiberglass right there It's done! I'm so excited. So we got this bottom thing off. Um, what I had to do was, is that, so there's uh, basically a big slot in there that the, plas uh, the fiberglass fits into. And so what I did was I took a screwdriver from the bottom and lightly expanded the air, uh, a couple, you know, sp spots. Every couple inches, I just lightly expanded it, knowing that, I, you know, I can always hammer it uh, closed shut. And then on the top, there's glue. So I cut through the glue on the top and then I pulled out a bunch of pieces that were like that shape. So I'm really excited because this side is done. It just needs rubber removal, but it also means that since the other side is mirrored, I have faced all the problems of removing it and there's no crazy hard parts. If you look, I'll jump you down here. When we're under here, you know, I was starting to get worried that I might have to drill out some of these rivets, which I don't have any more of, or bust out some of these panels, which are using this special type of glue in here. So I was worried about a couple different things, and um, I'm really excited now that we know we don't have to get into any craziness uh, to remove that side panel. So I've learned on this one, and I can do the other one now, and I'm sure it'll go much faster. And I am just excited. I think I just earned myself lunch. I'm gonna go get a cheeseburger, and then when I come back, Gonna hit that bulkhead. All right guys, it's time to start fiberglassing. So, what we're trying to fix is our rear bulkhead. Our rear bulkhead is 1 8 inch thick fiberglass. That's all it is, it's just a big ass generic piece of fiberglass. It's never seen on the outside or the inside of the car. So, this doesn't have to look pretty. That's why I decided to start here. I haven't done fiberglass in a very long time. Uh, I have done it before and I made things structural. Uh, so, I'm, you know, I'm, I'd say I'm a novice fiberglasser. I'm a beginning fiberglasser, but uh, you know, it's the BS for build style, like what's the worst that can go wrong? I'm not worried about uh, giving this a shot. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to give it my best shot and just do what comes naturally uh, to me that I think is right here. And um, so all, all that this does really is it's, a, it's used as a firewall. So if the engine has a fire, you need to keep the fire out of the cabin. So that's one purpose of this thing. It's used as a sound barrier for the engine to the cabin. And um, it's also used to have something for the side panels to glue up to and the roof to glue onto. So all I have to do really is make it the right shape and um, in the right angle, and I'm good to go. 
So what I'm going to do here is I've taken the uh, piece of cardboard, I've slid it down in the back here, and we are going to use this as a stencil. We're going to uh, draw a line here, cut out the cardboard, take that as our template. We're going to move over to a big piece of wood that I got. We're going to take that wood, we're going to cut out the same shape, and then we're going to slide the wood back in here, and then we are going to secure the rear bulkhead to that piece of wood. Uh, acting as a splint and then we will go and reinforce all the cracks we'll, we'll place all the pieces right back where they need to be obviously when we attach them to the wood and then we're going to come through and uh, repair everything with the fiberglass on this side and then after that's done we'll take our screws out we'll flip over to the other side and we'll do more fiberglass so all i really got to do here is get it to be more than one eighth of an inch thick and um, not you know impede any of the placement of the other parts and that's a win so we're going to go ahead and get started Alright guys, we got Adrian behind the camera, cameraman Adrian uh, joining me and so he was helping me out we built this uh, plywood splint. So this is what we got going on. So we, we, uh, we took the board, we cut it out to the rough shape just to give us a lot of overlap and other stuff like that. And then we um, used uh, the difference between, so some of this bulkhead sticks out further and luckily the difference between where it sticks out and where it doesn't stick out is uh, one width of this uh, board that we picked out so that we just got lucky there So you'll see that we got like a, a extra piece here here back here and back here and those are all like um, Sticking out of the wood to give us a difference in depth between this part here and for instance like this back plating here So at this point now what we're gonna do is we're like this is where this part's really gonna come in We just squeeze all this stuff together sandwich it all together and bolt it all up. So we're gonna bolt this into that, this into back here, uh, this piece into back here, and we can bolt it all to this uh, splint and that'll get everything flush. So we know that this side will be equal to that side and it's all flush throughout here. And then we can start uh, removing some glass and uh, thinking about our patches and how we're gonna build stuff back together. got everything bolted up against our backing board so you can see like a little screw right there and um, some over there and a couple like right there and there and there and a bunch over here so that keeps everything all flush and uniform going all the way across our top piece uh, didn't want to screw in uh, because the backing board is at an angle and the top piece doesn't want to be at that angle so that's okay what we're gonna do is use a couple little clamps um, so it's, uh, it's all set up there and it's all good and it's all sturdy. It's not going to move. So now we can go in and start sanding spots down and roughing them up and getting them ready for fiberglass. Hi guys. So I got this awesome little tool for sanding all these spots. This is a handheld little mini belt sander. It's got a really small surface area on the belt so it can get in these small areas right here and here. So what I got to do is go through and all these cracks and splits and anything that we want to repair. I'm going to take the belt sander and I got to sand it down to raw fiberglass. Similar with, with, with what you do to metal with removing the paint before you try and weld and stuff like that. We need raw fiberglass so that when we lay our, our fiberglass on top of it, it's fiberglass on fiberglass. So I got to go through and I'm going to sand up all the areas where we're going to try and fiberglass repair. Dude, I'm so tired of listening to music. Don't you ever just want to like read a book? Adrian, Hunger Games me. Game of Thrones me. Jesus Christ. Lord of the Rings me. Okay, clearly, clearly hardcover books aren't working out for us. Okay guys, on the real though, reading a book and working on your car at the same time is not possible. But with our sponsor, Audible, you can. You can download a book straight to your phone, play it in your shop, play it all through your shop, and listen to a book while you're jamming on your car. All those titles that I just mentioned, Game of Thrones, Hunger Games, Lord of the Rings, they're all on there. Uh, if you guys want to help support, go to audible.com build, and you can start your free 30-day trial and download your first audiobook for free. 
like I've always said, guys, help support people that support BS for Build. That's how we're gonna keep this train rolling. So go do that, audible.com slash build. Oh, Jesus. <laughs>
Uh, there's lots of different types of rollers to do this and you're gonna roll over your glass and what that does is it's trying to push any air bubbles out or uh, pockets of wrinkles or anything like that so it's a flat surface. The flatter you get it, the better it's gonna be and the stronger it's gonna be. So that's like a real, real basic from what I know about fiberglass. I apologize if I said anything wrong there. I'm pretty damn positive I didn't. But that's like a, a really, really beginner high level of what I'm trying to do. Uh, like I said earlier though, I haven't done any fiberglass on something that's this hardcore. Another thing to remember with fiberglass though is you can go over, you can have excess go over and you can always just come back and cut that excess off. So there's no real, you know, you're not gonna get in a bad spot if, for instance, I glass all the way down past this piece, I can just come back with a Dremel tool or any type of tool and just chop that piece right off and uh, it'll be just as structurally sound. So the idea here is we're gonna lay up fiberglass all on this side. Uh, do the best we can. We got to do two coats. So you do one coat and then you wait two to four hours for it to get tacky and then you come back and you lay up another coat. So you just want it to get uh, tacky, definitely not fully dry but not too wet. And then we'll lay up another coat and then we'll take our backing board off and then we can flip to the back side and we can fiberglass the whole back side. First layup of fiberglass is done. You can see over here, I used the um, the mat with the strands that go all different directions. It was a lot harder to work with for a newbie like me. Um, it created a couple more air bubbles and it was just hard to get all the little strands to play ball. Um, versus over here where I used the cloth, the woven cloth, um, things went in place a little bit easier. I could cut strips and run strips where I needed them to go. So um, if you're doing a much bigger project, like a bigger space, I don't know, the mat might be, I don't know, I don't know. But for beginners, I would advise try using the cloth um, if you're a newbie like me. And um, it went on all right. Uh, the only thing that I'm really surprised by is how thin it really applies. So we're gonna need to do a lot of coats of this stuff. But remember, this piece doesn't really matter how thick it gets. I mean, if, it, if this ended up a half an inch thick, it's okay because all this does, again, keeps fire away from me while I'm driving the car and keeps the sound out. Um, this isn't seen by anybody, so it doesn't have to look super pretty. It just needs to do its job. So it's a good learning piece uh, So so far so good. I mean first try if you don't have to undo it. That's that's a win in my book and uh, We're getting things on there. So two and a half hours uh, That we have to wait for this to dry up firm up and get tacky before we can lay our next layer on there Okay guys two hours has elapsed. Um, I'm going over here. So the idea was we we're trying to catch it while it's tacky So over here, it's still tacky over here, it's pretty damn hardened up. This stuff is amazing. It is hardened so strong. This is really gonna work, that's for sure. Um, it's just keeping it clean, I think, at this point and just, you know, continuing to lay layers in, but it's already got, like, this shit is super strong. So, uh, one thing, though, to note, though, is, is this is tacky, this is dry. This I did, and then, like, I got this done about 20 minutes later, so there's a big difference between two hours and 20 minutes and two hours, so. Uh, don't be lazy on the clock. I should have been back on this at about an hour and 50 and been looking at this piece, but oh well. Uh, we learned from that and now it's time to move on. So I'm going to keep using the woven mat rather than the fibers and um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started and go from that side to that side one more time and lay another layer on there. Fiberglass, our second layer, went on really good. Uh, this stuff is really fun. I really enjoy uh, learning that. That's a fun process. Um, I highly uh, recommend if anybody has a fiberglass job at home they think they need to do, give it a shot. It's been fun learning. So again, two hours setup time. <clears throat> While that sets up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this plastic that was protecting the car, I'm gonna use that to actually protect the wet fiberglass, and then I am gonna go after this side panel. So I set myself a goal. Uh, for this episode, I wanted to have both the side panels completely removed and some layers of fiberglass on this rear bulkhead. And we're getting really close to that. But if you remember the last time I removed a side panel, it took me an entire day, and now I have about four hours. But I'm gonna give it my best shot, and I think I can do it. So I'm gonna put in two hours right now on time lapse, and I'm gonna show you guys two hours real time, cut down to 15 seconds. Here we go. That 
went pretty well. I got everything from that bottom side of the panel going all the way across the side part of the panel uh, leading up this side rail and got the windshield rail all done even all the way up to the top and clean that part off. So in two hours I was able to get all that done in exactly two hours minus this bottom piece of fiberglass. So I'm gonna have to come back and take that off after I jump back on here and lay up one more piece, one more layer of fiberglass. It's a good thing that I put this over it. It trapped a lot of dust. So uh, we'll pull this apart, mix up some more resin and lay another uh, layer of fiberglass. Third layer of fiberglass is all on there. That's looking good. I'm happy about that. Um, I'm super excited because I'm getting really close to my goal for the weekend, which I honestly thought was pretty unattainable. But once we take this bottom piece off, um, then I'm done. I've reached my goal for the weekend. Uh, so I'm going to clean up all this uh, space so I can get on the ground. I have to lay down to do this. And I'm going to remove this bottom panel. And then guys, get this. When that panel is off, we're finally done with teardown on this car. From that point on, it's just all rebuilding. There's nothing more to take off of this car and tear off. Very exciting, super exciting turning point for me. I can't wait to get this done and, uh, and reach my goal. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all the ground and get to it. goal. I'm so damn happy that I hit the goal of re completely removing both side panels, building some of that bulkhead back up, building that kind of splint and that backing board for it and starting the fiberglass on that. We're done tearing down the Evora. Now it's time to rebuild it. It took a hell of a lot of episodes to tear it down, I will admit. But uh, it's been really fun and, and it's coming along great. So I'm very excited. Parts are coming. I, I got an update on the parts. The delivery company doesn't think they've been delivered yet, but the company that I bought them from does think they've been delivered. So I don't think they're lost. I think they just haven't yet been delivered and that the guy that I bought them from falsely has delivery claims. Let's not worry about it. They should be here this upcoming week, but there is a holiday. Today is a holiday. I'm releasing this video on the 4th of July. Happy birthday to America. Yep, we made it another year. <laughs> Fingers crossed we make it one more. Like, you guys gotta give me some time to drive this car before we end the fucking world. Anyways, sorry, um, not to get off into politics. I had a really fun time with this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you wanna support Be Is For Build, head over to beisforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop. There's all sorts of great, all sorts of great stuff there. All sorts of great things there. Like the Be Is For Build uh, Lotus Evora t-shirt that I'm rocking, they come in black and white. Pick one of those up, all the proceeds of those go to directly to helping the channel. Uh, if you don't wanna do that, maybe you don't have any money, or I don't know, you like audiobooks, head over to audible.com slash build. If you go there, they are offering a free 30 day trial and a free audiobook when you go there. So please do that, help support. If you're on the fence, you're like, man, I've been thinking about trying this Audible thing, now's a damn good time to try. Audible.com slash build. Free 30 day trial, free audiobook. hit it up. Thank you guys in advance. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you guys very much for watching. You can find us at facebook.com slash B is for build and we are B is for build on Instagram. Man, I'm just so happy. I'm so happy. I'm leaving and it's daylight. This is like, this doesn't happen very often. Um, and I think this is the part where I beg you guys, please, please subscribe and hit the like button. I get more likes when you do that. I heard somebody say that on the internet. All right guys. Thank you guys very much for watching. Peace.